Hello everyone, my name is Jason Parker and welcome back to this channel about magic. Well, guess what? No, really. Yes. Well, that's exactly correct. Season 7 of Penn & Teller has resumed after its month-long hiatus. Probably something to do with the whole COVID situation and having to buffer the remaining episodes for the rest of this year. By the way, before we get into the reaction, have you seen my recent video where I'm performing magic for friends? If not, you should definitely check it out. I'm very happy with how it came out. I think it's fun and entertaining. And at the end of that video, there's one magic effect I perform that's very powerful, where the spectator ends up essentially intuiting and predicting exactly which are all of the black and red cards throughout the entire deck. It's really mind-blowing and impossible. It's one of my favorite magic tricks. And because in the comments people were asking about that and because I love the magic effect, I decided today to release a tutorial on my Patreon teaching it. So if you want to learn this, go to Google and type Jason Parker Patreon. And uh, yeah, I put a lot of thought into the tutorial. I performed this effect for years and I've got a lot of subtleties and nuances to tell you. And I have a section in there where I show you how to deal with difficult spectators or hecklers should they arise. So check it out, help support the channel, learn some amazing magic. And now proceeding with the reaction, we have Boris Wilde. He is a French magician and his name is well known in the magic community. I doubt there are any magicians who haven't heard his name before. In fact, you could say that he's pretty famous to magicians for one of the magical effects he's created. I can't really say what it is because just by its nature, I don't want to spoil it. But suffice it to say, when I saw that he was going to be on Fool Us, I was very excited and I really can't can't wait to see what he's going to show them. So with that being said, let's just go ahead and jump into the reaction. Oh, by the way, my AirPods started malfunctioning, so I'm going to have to deal with this mess today. Hard to even remember how I lived life before I had wireless Bluetooth devices. The struggle is real. Bonjour, my name is Boris Wilde and I come from Paris, France. Some people think just because I'm French, I'm very suave and romantic. Well, it's pretty accurate. I love to play with emotions in my signature act. And I love to play music because music is a wonderful way to just tell a story even without talking. But thinking about my act through Penn and Teller's eyes has allowed me to strip my act down and try to get inside the mind of Penn and Teller. Of course, hopefully to fool them. Penn, Teller, get ready. It's gonna be wild. In fact, I'm thinking, will he be able to get into their minds? Because them being magicians, I'm sure, 100% sure they've heard of Boris Wilde before. I'm sure they're going to have in mind that he might be using one of his creations. I can't say anymore, but uh, I know what I'll be watching for. So let's keep going. With two randomly selected world famous magicians, please welcome Boris Wilde. Thank you. Thank you. Bonjour, Penn. Bonjour, Teller. Ah, it's a great honor to be here with you today. But I must say, it was a big challenge to come up with something special for your show because, of course, I want to fool you, but for that, we have to be very, very good. So with this routine, I try to imagine uh, what you would say, uh, how you would talk in your tricky little codes. And I spent so much time doing this that I actually began hearing your voices in my head while I perform. What a bunch of nonsense. This guy created a way to hear my thoughts in my voice. There would be real magic. See? Did you hear that? I told I you. Yeah, that, that's it's crazy, right? Wow. I mean, that sounds exactly like him. That's a smart idea. And like, I wonder how he did that. Did he use computer technology to make a voice that sounded like Penn? Or did he hire someone who can do voice impersonations? Inquiring minds want to know. What do you think? Leave a comment below. Sound a lot like me. <laughs> but now, for the trick. <laughs> the Frenchie is not using a fresh deck, which means he's got the cards set the way he wants them. <laughs> <clears throat> well, uh, yes. So it's probably better if we use a brand new deck of cards that comes straight from the factory. Yep, and... Yep. Pen, would you please choose any deck you want, anyone you want? This one here, all right, we don't need those. And let me open this one here for you. And obviously the car. 
Well, that was weird. I mean, if they're brand new decks, shouldn't they have cellophane and that seal on them? I mean, he just opened the box immediately. That was really strange. Did any of you notice that? Leave a comment below if you if that struck you as odd. I mean, when he dumped them all over the table, you see each of them has that seal that has to be torn on them, and he just like opened the flap. Okay, okay. I think what's happening here is that the video editors for the Foolish TV show decided to cut out that portion just to speed up the act. But it's weird because the way they edited it together, it just seemed like it was flowing from one thing to another, like instantly. Admittedly, that's a minor point and perhaps not significant, but I mean, it just struck me as odd. So I'm assuming some of you watching at home have felt the same way. Back to the act. ...are in brand new deck order. Yes. So I'm going to shuffle them. Yes. And tell her, <laughs> I mean, it's funny because when I do this shuffle here, it's like I can hear you thinking and Penn doing the talking for you. Teller says watching you do that shuffle makes him think you know a lot about the ancient Egyptian pharaohs. <laughs> the, yeah, the Egyptian pharaohs, yes. So that's why it's better, I think, could you please shuffle the cards yourself so that we know that everything is absolutely fair from the beginning. Yes, nice, very good. Thank you, good. Oh, well, but even though you may think... He probably peeped at the bottom card to make it the key of the tree. Well, yes, I could have. Okay. So could you please cut and complete so now I know absolutely nothing about this deck? Right. Thank you. Great. Taylor, in one moment, I will ask you to pick a card in that deck here. But um, I don't want you know, to open the spread a little wider somewhere, or you may think... Tell her things you're trying to make him take a particular card. So, no, make sure... No, no, no. Man, that voice really sounds like Penn, doesn't it? I'm curious how he got it to be so accurate. What do you think? Really, leave a vote in the comments below. Computer generated or voice actor slash impersonator? Okay, okay, back to the act. Make sure you really, really take any card, yes? And also, I, I will look away, you know? Because you probably think... He's gonna look at the cards. But no, I swear, I promise, I'm not looking. Please take any cards you like, any one you like. Yeah, I'm not looking. Yeah, you got one? Remember it, show it to everyone in the audience at home, to pen too, please. And pen, in case you're thinking. Now he's gonna control the card. No, I will not control it. So could you please uh, put it back here? Yeah, so now it's lost in the deck and also, I will perfectly square the cards so there is nothing to see. Or you may think... He's doing something sneaky to help him find the card. <laughs> nope. And I leave the cards on the table. So guys, is it possible for me to know anything about Taylor's card right now? Most people would say no. But these two are thinking... Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and they are right. And that's why I want you to shuffle the cards again. So now you think... Damn, he can't know the card or it's positioned in the deck now. Yes. Huh. So I've got to say that I'm pretty sure they just cut something out of the video. I think in the real performance, he just did something there and the video editors for Fool Us just removed it so we couldn't see it at all. A bold claim, you may say. <laughs> but I have watched Boris Wilde's magician lecture before and some of what he's doing, he's taught before. He shared some of his secrets and methods. I'm not gonna say how he was doing this, but I am 98% sure uh, they removed a segment. He would have had to do something on the table there. There's no way he could have just handed the whole deck to Teller and had him shuffle them at this point. Don't believe me? Think I'm wrong? Let's just take a look again. Here you can see the cards are on the table. And then they're in his hand as he hands them to Teller. So there's definitely at least a little something chopped there. Anyways, I don't want to beat a dead horse. I just wanted to point that out in the interest of discussing the magic we're seeing. Let's keep going. Yep, thank you. But I promise to find it, so I will do it with a free choice from New Pen. Could you please name any number between 1 and 52, please? 3. 3? Oh, wow. Okay, that's a small number, but yes, 3. Okay. It, I mean, it's funny because I can hear... That French guy did not use a magician's choice for my number. Is there really any number? <laughs> yes. <laughs> but, I mean, yes, it's true. But you said three. I did. All right. So, let's, let's, look, let's have a look at the third card in the deck. Yes, let's. One, two, three. 
Is it just me or do you hear them thinking? Let's watch closely to see if he does any funny moves. But if the card is somehow in that position, wow. <laughs> For the very first time, Penn, please, can you tell us the card that uh, Taylor chose earlier? Two of spades. Is that right? Two of spades? Yes. Could you please take the cards and show to the audience the third card in the deck, please? Show to everyone the card. What is it? Is that it? Is that the two of spades? Yes! Oh my god, a miracle! <laughs> we made it! Oh wow! <laughs> yes. Look at Taylor's face. Wait, wait, wait! Wait! Wait, because I see their faces. Maybe one final thought? I think you fooled us. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so very much for helping. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let me give you my thoughts before we hear from Penn and Teller. Okay, so there are a lot of things going on here. First off, in terms of what I was mentioning earlier, where I was talking about them chopping out a segment of the video, I still believe that's what happened, although that would have only gotten him so far as to know the identity of Teller's card. Now for the second part, where Penn just named a number and it was at the third position, I have literally no idea. I mean, that was really magical. <laughs> it surprised me, it shocked me. You could see Penn was absolutely shocked. I've never seen him with such a look of astonishment on his face. I mean, usually he's laughing and he enjoys the presentation of everything but he looked really absolutely shocked and it was so funny at that moment if we look at that again to compare the expressions on Penn versus Teller's face Penn is letting out his emotions he is amazed and Teller just has a blank poker face like a statue I don't know if his brain is just going into overdrive or if he's kind of angry that he got fooled <laughs> So I have no idea how he got that card at that number, unless there was another segment that the Fool Us editors chose to carve out. Because even though Fool Us says we don't use any camera tricks or tricky editing, in my experience, they do. And I think it's a balance, right? The uh, producers and the people, the staff working for the show, they have to balance showing us at home the good magic, but they have to balance that with protecting and preserving the magical secrets. At least I'm assuming that's why they would choose to chop out segments as they often do. It doesn't happen all the time, but sometimes you just see it and you know something was removed. And I wanna add one more thing. Boris Wilde really is a genius. He's super smart. He invented whole systems that other magicians use. And if I had not watched his lecture, I would have also been fooled by the first part. I would not have known how he was accomplishing that. It just so happens that I've watched his lecture already and I know about the magical secrets that he's shared with the magician community. So I definitely don't feel like, ha ha, I'm Mr. Smart and I know what he did. I just feel fortunate and lucky that I happen to have already watched his lecture beforehand. So what I'm saying is he did an amazing job and he's a very talented magician, not only creating Creative, but also very good technically with his fingers. I'm really puzzled about how he got that card to the third position. And uh, let's just hear what Penn and Teller have got to say. That was very impressive. <laughs> I don't know if I've ever seen Penn make my expression. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Are you happy? Oh, yes, yes. It's a pleasure to be here. I mean, yeah, it's Vegas, Penn and Teller, the best magicians in the world here, this show. I mean, come on. Was it your intention to leave both of them speechless? My idea was just to, you know, come here and just perform something for them that they would enjoy. And, and, and did you come up with this trick just for them? Yeah, I created this trick first. And it's true, when I, what I said at the beginning is very true. Uh, I, for each routine, I was like, okay, what would they think? They would think this, they would think that. Okay, well, and so, and I started to hear them. I'm like, when they talk now, nobody knows, nobody knows what they're saying, yeah. but what if we could hear them, but not after, during the performance? Just like, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. <laughs> and that, you know, and I put all the things together, and that it's was it. Brilliant. <laughs> all right, what do you think, Boris? Should we find out if you fooled them? Uh, well, I would love to hear them, of course. All right, <laughs> Boris, Boris, will you allow me to actually speak for myself now? <laughs> Can I speak? Good, good, good. The idea of doing our thoughts and how we speak in code and the way we think was just brilliant and original and beautiful and frighteningly close to what we really were thinking at those times. You could almost have passed it off as a mind reading act. Those are not just <laughs> clipped things that I said before. Some of those things I'm fairly certain I never said. That is actually cloning my voice. Now, we caught you on a few things we kind of sort of think but neither Teller nor I could remember. And I'm gonna, I'm gonna trust you. I want an honest answer. 
did you square up the deck before I said the number three? Or did I say the number three and then you squared up the deck? No, it was squared before you said the number it three. It was fully squared when I said the number three. It was. Interesting. So it seems like that's the part they're focusing on was Teller's card appearing at the number three that Pin chose. Like they're not even talking about all the rest of like how did he know it was Teller's card. They're fixating and focusing on the moment right before Pin said the number three. Hmm. So just like I'm feeling, that especially seems to be the precise moment that was the most confounding about the whole performance. Proceeding. In that case, would you use my clone voice? to say what you wanted to say. I think you fooled us. <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank you. Congratulations, Morris Wilde! All right, now let me go ahead and give you my closing thoughts. First off, congratulations to Boris Wilde. He definitely deserved that. I'm very happy that he won. He is a legend. And it's really cool that despite the fact so many magicians know about him and what he's famous for releasing to the magic community, he was still able to construct magic in such a way that he would fool Penn and Teller. You know, because Teller has quite an encyclopedic knowledge of card magic. So yeah, I really am curious how he got Pin's card, or I should say Teller's card, at that exact number that Pin said. Was there a piece of the video cut out that we didn't get to see, or was it exactly what we saw in the video? I mean, as far as I remember, it looked like he just had the cards there. Pin said three, and he's like, one, two, three, there it is. I didn't see anything else. But even if, even if the producers or the editors of the Fool Us show decided to chop off some segment there, you know, even if we'd be able to figure it out, if we could have seen the full thing, for example, still, he fooled Penn and Teller. They were th right there at the table watching him and he fooled them. So despite the fact that I keep talking about little segments of video being removed from what we see, I am not at all trying to take away from Boris Wilde's victory. He definitely a hundred million percent deserved it. I just talk about these things because I think, you know, you and I watching this video at home, we like to discuss the act and the method and think about these things. And all I have to work off of is what you saw as well. <laughs> By the way, if you want to learn from Boris Wilde's material, he has a website set up where you can purchase some of his magic effects directly from him. So check in the description below, I will put a link to his website. Mark my words, there are definitely some interesting things you might want to pick up on his website. And what did you think? Leave a comment below what you thought about his performance. I did, in addition, think it was very funny and comical how he had Pin's voice talking the whole time. How do you think he did that? How did he make it sound so much like Pin? If I get lucky enough that Boris Wilde actually reacts to this video, maybe he will answer that question for all of us. And now, it's time for that portion of the video where in which we read a short story from Aesop's Fable and maybe learn something about life. So don't stop the video yet. Don't judge a book by its cover. Don't judge me for reading children's stories to you. All right, randomly making a selection. The Two Soldiers and the Robber, Chapter 106. Two soldiers traveling together were set upon by a robber. One of them ran away, but the other stood his ground and laid about him so lustily with his sword that the robber was fain to fly and leave him in peace. When the coast was clear, the timid one ran back and, flourishing his weapon, cried in a threatening voice, Where is he? Let me get at him, and I'll soon let him know whom he's got to deal with. But the other replied, You're a little late, my friend. I only wish you had backed me up just now, even if you had done no more than speak, for I should have been encouraged, believing your words to be true. As it is, calm yourself and put up your sword. There is no further use for it. You may delude others into thinking you're as brave as a lion, but I know that at the first sign of danger, you run away like a hare. All right, well, this seems kind of like a obvious story. I mean, it doesn't seem like there are any real subtle nuances going on unless I'm missing something. The one soldier was just a coward and wanted to pretend he wasn't. Seems kind of basic. Well, if I'm to really try to wring something out of this story, I guess you can say it's one of those things like judge people by their actions, not by their words. He says you may delude other people into thinking you're brave, but I know you're not. I've got to say this one is one of my least favorite stories because it just seems too simple. I like when there's at least some clever aspect aspect of the story. He also should have told the guy that he's not his friend, you know? He did say, like, I wish you had stayed around to back me up, even, like, vocally encouraging me. But the conclusion should have been, like, you're no true friend. 
Yeah, actually, first I was going to read this uh, fable at the top, chapter 105, The Blackamoor. But after reading it, I realized it's one of those super old kind of racist stories, and I don't want to get into that at all. So I read you this one below, The Two Soldiers and the Robber. And this one's really simplistic without any nuance. So... I gave the fables two tries, and that's enough for today. If you can think of any other interpretations, uh, feel free to let me know if I missed something, but I feel like there's not a lot there. So that being said, I want to thank you guys for watching this video. Remember to check out my Patreon if you're interested in learning that magic trick I was telling you about, and at least check out the Magic with Friends video that I published. I thought it had a lot of funny moments. I was really happy with how it came out. And if all goes well, there should be a part two. I usually don't like to say anything before a video is ready to be released, but that should be coming. What else? What else? I am curious to know how many episodes there will be, because in the past there's always been exactly 13 episodes per Fool Us season. But now that we got this whole weird COVID situation in 2020, everything's a little bit disrupted, so it's quite possible we might get like 17 or 20 episodes. Any other updates? I'm trying to think if anything else has happened lately. Nope, not really. Hope you're having a great month, a great week, a great year, a great last five minutes. And I'll see you next time. Yep.